hey guys welcome back again to my tutorial video my name is Chioma I'm gonna be filming a tutorial video on i864 easy I've done this video before I explained it but it's not written down so this time I want to like explain it much more better if you are new to my channel please like share comment and subscribe to my channel with that being said i said i'm filling the form i864 ez when filling up this form please check for the expiration date my expiration date is 2021 on the 10th 31st when filling up this form, you have to type or print in black ink. You have to read the question accurately. And if you need extra space, that should be on the last page, seven. With that being said, let's dive into it. I've already filled this form. Is filled up already, so I'll be explaining it. One A says, I am the petitioner of the family member sponsored on this affidavit. So it's I click yes, but if you click no, it says you're gonna use the form IA64. 1B says, I'm using my own end or retirement income, which is documented using Internal Revenue Service. That's the IRS form W-2. And I click yes. 1C, the sponsored immigrant is the only person immigrating based on the underlying visa petition i also click yes so from 1a to 1c your answer must be yes if you click no on any answer you have to use the form ia64 we move over to part two part Two is talking about the information about the immigrant you are sponsoring. That's the intending immigrant. So name of the immigrant. The first name we the last name of the immigrant. Sorry, on one A, is Johnson. One B, the first name is Jane. One C. The middle name is Chinelo. So, the intending migrant is a female. We move over to the mailing address. This is the mailing address of the intending immigrant. 2A in the in care name of Jane Johnson. 2B. He's talking about the street number and name. That is the what is there is 30 Ujoto Street. 2C apartment street floor. We clicked on street. And the the street the street name is my three Diob. 2D city or town. We click on Portacourt City. So, 2E, they don't have no state. 2F, they don't have no zip code. 2G, province, they don't have no province. 2H, postal code, they don't have no postal code. 2I, country, is Nigeria. Other information, number three says the daytime telephone number. 
So we put in the date, time, telephone number. Number four says the date, the month, the date of birth, the month, the date, and the year. So the month is zero one zero four one nine nine zero. So they said Allen registration number. That's the A number, if any. So the person doesn't have any A number because the person hasn't been to United States before. So your UIS, the USCIS online account number. She doesn't have any USCIS online account number number seven is talking about the u.s social security number she doesn't have any because she hasn't been to united states or live in the united states before so we move over to the next one the next one is says part three Part three is talking about the information about you. That's the sponsor. Says one A says the last name. That is Johnson. That's the sponsor. Don't forget, guys, this is the sponsor. One B says the given name. The given name is David. 1C, the middle name is Emeka. Mailing address. 2A, in care name of David Johnson. 2B, the street number and name. It says 222 West Devon. 2C, we needed, it says apartment street floor. We clicked on apartments. So the apartment number is 4A. 2D says city or town. The city is Chicago. 2E states is Illinois. 2F is zip code is 60660. 2G province. They don't have no province. 2i the country is usa and they say is your current mailing address the same as your physical address yes or no so we clicked yes this says if you answered no to item number three provide your physical address below so we clicked yes so we don't need to provide the physical address but if you click no it's not the same then you have to provide your physical address other information other information is you the sponsor so the country of domicile is usa number six date of bet the month the date and the year so in here we fill in the form you say zero six zero one nineteen eighty five we move to number seven number seven is saying the city or town of bet is lagos the number eight says the state or province of bet we put lagos number nine country of bet nigeria number 10 the u.s social security number it is required so we put one two three four five six seven eight so number 11 uscis online account number so they don't have any uscis online account number so we move over to the citizenship or nationality number 12 says i am a u.s citizen so if this is applicable to you you click 
I am a U.S. citizen. So we clicked. The person is a U.S. citizen. Number 13A says, I am a lawful permanent resident. If you are a lawful permanent resident, you click on lawful permanent resident. Number 13B says, my island registration number is... So you put in your island registration number. In here, we put 08765432 Military service number 15 says, I am currently on active duty in the United States of America. United States, sorry, Armed Force or U.S. Coast Guard. If it's yes... If it's no, you click on yes. If it's no, you click no. So we clicked no. The person is not on U.S. Armed Forces or U.S. Coast Guard. We move over to part four. Part four, it says information about your household size. It says note, do not count any household member more than once. Guys, pay attention to this. Do not count your household member more than once. One A says yourself and the person you are sponsoring on this form, IA64EZ. So that means yourself and the person you are sponsoring, that is yourself, that is you guys are already two. So I indicate, I put two in there. One B says your spouse. So if you are married or if you are not married and the person's name is not on the one you listed on 1A, you indicate, you put 1 there. So 1C says your dependent children under 21 years of age. If you have any dependent children under 21 years of age, you indicate. One D says, if you have sponsored any other persons on a form IA64 who are now lawful permanent residents in the United States, enter the number here. You enter the number there. One E says, if you have any other dependents, Listed on your most recent federal income tax return. Enter the number here. So you enter the number there. One F says add together item numbers 1A to 1E. And enter the number here. This is your household size for the purpose of this form ia 64 easy so the total is two so we put in two don't forget guys don't count more than once so we move to the next one part five so part five is talking about information about your employment and income so this person says i am currently employed if you are employed you click employed if you are retired you click retired so for the person filling this form he clicked employed so 2a is asking for current occupation so the person's current occupation is a nurse to be they needed the name of the employer one so we person's employer is advocates health care to see is saying the name of the employer if applicable so the person doesn't have second job or second employer. 3A 
It's talking about the name of former employer. So they don't have no, he doesn't have no name of former employer. But if you have, you indicate the name. 3B says date of retirement. If you have retired, they needed the month, the date, and the year. Number four says my current annual income. My current individual annual income is 94000 Federal income tax information. Number five A says, have you filed a federal income tax return for each of the three most recent years? If it's yes, you click on. If it's no, you click no. So we clicked yes. It says note, you must attach a photocopy or transcript of your federal income tax return for only the most recent tax year. 5B says it's optional. I have attached photocopies or transcripts of my federal income tax returns for my second and third most recent tax years. So we clicked on it. My total income adjustment gross income on IRS form 1040 easy as reported on my federal income tax return for the most recent three years was so the most recent one the the tax year 2019 the income was 94,000 6b second most recent one was 2018 and the income was 90,000 6c the third most recent one was 2017 and the income was 89,000 part 6 is talking about the sponsors contract statement contact information declaration certification and signature it says note read the penalties section of this form ia64 easy instructions before completing this part you have to read the section of the form ia64 instruction before completing this part so he says by signing this form i864 easy you agree to assume certain specific obligations under the immigration and nationality act i n a and other federal laws the following paragraph describe those obligations please read the following information carefully before you sign the form I-864. If you do not understand the obligations, you may wish to consult an attorney or accredited representative. So guys, you have to read this form. You have to read and understand it before signing the form. So we move over to the next one. The next one is talking about still the continuation of part six sponsors, contract, statement, contact, information, declaration, certification, and signature. So the continuation. So the continuation. So we move over to the sponsor's statement. The sponsor's statement 
says note select the bus for either item number 1a or 1b if applicable select the bus for item number 2 1a says i can read and understand english and i have read and understand every question and instruction on this affidavit and my answer to every question so if that applicable to you you click it so it's applicable to us 1b says the interpreter name in part 7 read to me every question and instruction on this affidavit and my answer to every question in so you put in the interpreter's name too as well and you clicked on it number two says at my request the preparer name in part eight so you have to put the preparer's name who helped you to prepare this form for you so you click on number two if that is applicable to you as well we move into the sponsors contact information so we need the sponsors daytime telephone number number three it says seven seven three five 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 zero 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 number four okay. says sponsors mobile telephone number if any so it's still the same thing too so number five says sponsors email address if any we used Johnson David at yahoo.com. So, this is the sponsor's declaration and certification. It says, copies of any document I have submitted are exact photocopy of unadulterated original documents and I and I understand that USCIS or the US Department of State DOS may require that I submit original documents to USCIS or DOS at a later date. Furthermore, I authorize the release of any information from any of my record that USCIS or DOS may need to determine my eligibility for the immigration benefit I seek. So we move over to the next one. Still the continuation of part six. So we move over to sponsors signature so this is number six a says sponsors signature so the person have to put the signature there number six b is talking about the date of signature we needed the month the date and the year so we put 06 16 2020 so he says note to all sponsor if you do not completely fill out this affidavit or fail to submit required documents listed in the instructions, USCIS or DOS may deny your request. We move over to part 7. Part 7 is talking about the interpreter contact information, certification and signature says provide the following information about the interpreter so this is for the interpreter the person who interprets this form to you why filling up this form 1a they needed the family last name that's the last name 1b interpreters given name that's the first name one number two is talking about the business or organization of the interpreter so they're talking about the, the interpreter's business or organization name. So you indicate interpreter's mailing address. Interpreter's mailing address 3A street number 
and name. 3B says apartment street floor. 3C city or town. 3D states zip code 3E. 3F province 3G postal code 3H. They needed the country for the interpreter's mailing address. We move over to the interpreter's contact information. Just the same way you're going to fill up the sponsor's um, contact information, sponsor's um, um, full name, the same way too as well. So the interpreter's daytime telephone number, they needed it on number four. Number five, interpreter's mobile telephone number, if any. Number six, interpreter's email address. So we have to read this. It's very easy. Interpreter's certification. So these guys read. It's very easy to read. So we move over to the next one. The next one is still talking about the part seven, the continuation, interpreters, contact information, certification, and signature. Interpreter's signature. They needed interpreter signature on number seven A. Number seven B is talking about the date of signature, the month, the date, and the year. Part 8 is talking about the contact information, declaration, and signature of a person preparing this affidavit, if other than the sponsor. Provide the following information about the preparer. Preparer's full name, 1A, they did the last name, 1B, the first name. Number 2 is talking about the preparer's business or organization name if any preparers mailing address street number and name 3b apartment street or floor 3c city or town 3d states 3e zip code 3f the province 3g postcode postal code 3h the country Preparers contact information. Number four, the daytime telephone number. Number five, preparers mobile telephone number. Number six, preparers email address, if any. Move to the preparers statement. 7A is talking about I am not an Anthony or accredited representative but but have prepared this affidavit on behalf of the sponsor and with the sponsor's consent so if the person is not a lawyer that prepared this form or accredited representative so the person have to indicate on 7a so 7b says i am an attorney or a or accredited representative and my representation of the sponsor in this case extend does not extend beyond preparation of this affidavit so 7a is talking about if the person is a lawyer or accredited representative so they have to click either the person extend does not extend beyond preparing this affidavit so we click extend or S does not extend. So move over to the preparer's signature. Preparer's signature. We needed it on number 8A. The date of the signature, the month, the date, and the year. We move over to the next one. Oh, that's the last one part nine part nine is talking about additional information it says if you need extra space to complete 
any additional information within this affidavit use the space below if you need more space than what is provided you may make copies of this page to complete and file with this affidavit or attach a separate sheet of paper type or print your name and a number if any at the top of each sheet indicate the page number part number and item number to which your answer refers and sign and date each sheet so this is talking about the additional information so if you need any extra space to complete additional information this is what you need to put on here so if in, in case this but this space they provided is not enough you need to make a copy of the page to complete the affidavit or attach a separate sheet of paper so you have to type your name and a number if any at the top of each sheet also indicate the page number the part number and the item number so don't forget to sign and the, the date too as well on each sheet so this is how it looks like so please guys this is how it looks like we have come to the end of this tutorial video if you enjoy watching this tutorial video please give it a thumbs up please like share comment and subscribe guys please subscribe to my channel please i will see you guys in my next video bye